Guys, welcome to our first day, Gamer Island Dist episode. The idea is that we invite other YouTubers down into our little studio here and we talk about games that are important to them and find out what got them into YouTube and other various aspects of their gaming life. I am very happy to acknowledge the fact that Nabbit has actually taken the time to come here and be our first ever guest on this. So Nabbit, welcome to the show. Hello. What did you think of our little island here? Yeah, it's quite, of... it's quite a hot little island. There's a lot of lights pointing at it, but it, <laughs> it's pretty cool. A little bit of gaming paradise. Now, yeah. People will recognise you from YouTube. Would you like to do a little introduction so people would recognise you? Okay, uh, I play Call of Duty, I kill shit. Um, I also play some other games on my channel occasionally. I haven't uploaded recently, but it's coming. It is coming. That's one thing I was going to talk to you about, is you've taken a bit of a hiatus I have. from your channel. Yeah. You better have a damn good reason, because you had a lot of loyal subscribers, man. <laughs> you've left them in the lurch. We've been clamouring. I tried! <laughs> We've been um, clamouring for you to come back. But yeah. And yet you chose your exams over us. Well, it was partly that, and it was partly that competitive scenes started to take over a little bit, and I started to have less time to go into public matches and actually oh, right, make those okay. videos as well. Just what point did you actually think, right, now's the time to make a Call of Duty focused channel? At what point did you sit back? You've been playing Call of Duty for a while before you started making YouTube. I yeah, I did. So what point um, did you think, hey, people might want to watch me play this, I'm relatively good? When I got to a stage where I could actually move around the map without dying a lot, <laughs> Basically, <laughs> Call of Duty, budding Call of Duty commentators, make sure you've got to that stage before you start commentating. I no have one likes seen to see people who have not got to that stage and started doing it. No one likes to see loads of deaths. <laughs> no one likes to see you running around and dying whilst you're trying to talk. You want to mm. see what Nabbit does end up with lots oh, of kills. Oh no, no. Be before I reach that stage, I didn't run a lot, ran a lot, and die. I just didn't move. <laughs> you're a camper. You're a Call of Duty camper. I I don't call it camping because I was using a sniper and it tended to be on wasteland and I was using a ghillie suit and a thermal and I was using a sniper how a sniper is meant to be used thank you for saying that Loz will back me up on this the amount of people that call people hard stopers what is a hard stoper? it's a sniper right? yeah what do you use as a sniper? a scope exactly and how do you snipe? you aim down and you go <gasps> and hold your breath you don't always go I, in there. I, I was about to have a massive argument with you um, for the sake of the quickscoping community, but I, I will try and restrain myself <sighs> because I can appreciate all of the quickscopers out there and it is something that's fun to do and it is something that... I'm sorry, carry on. I was just telling all the quickscopers how horrible people they are. <laughs> just because I can't do it, all right? It's, it's, something it's purely because I can't do it. It can be done and it's fun and I have some montages on my channel if you want to see some people doing it. Of course, his channel will be in the description below. And we're actually going to bring up your first game. We asked you to bring along a number of games yeah. uh, that you want to talk about, that you're going to bring to your island. You asked me to bring four, didn't I you? I asked you to bring four. And I've brought more than four. And you brought more than four. But that's okay. We can work with that. We like yeah. a passionate gamer. And the first one we're going to talk about is actually one that's quite close to your heart as a competitive gamer. Yeah. And that is uh, Black Ops 2. Right. Yeah. In my games, I try to keep kind of a wide variety. So I've got like a first-person shooter in there. I've got a 3D platformer, a 2D platformer, and a racing game. And some other stuff as well. But my first game is actually going to be the shooter and it is going to be a Call of Duty game. So this is really, really generic here, but this is Call of Duty Black Ops 2. You kind of knew this was coming. He is a Call of Duty player. His channel is mainly Call of Duty. But why it's, Black Ops 2? There's a number of games you could have chosen. Um, well, there's a number of games in the series. The new, one, the new ones tend to be getting worse with the exception of Black Ops 2. But um, the older ones, I didn't want to choose them because I got into Call of Duty around the stage when Modern Warfare 2 came out. Modern Warfare 2 is horribly broken. Uh, Black Ops yeah. 1 isn't quite as good as Black Ops 2. Yep. And I disagree with you a little on that, but carry on. Again, this is the great thing about Call of Duty. It's all perspective, isn't it? It's, it's all individual. It's Everyone has their own idea of how they want to play games and how they want to, yeah. how they want to play Call of Duty. But, so Black Ops 2, better than Black Ops 1 in your opinion. Yeah. Much better than Modern Warfare 2. Modern mm. Warfare 3? What are your Modern, on Modern that? Warfare 3 was fun, but it was even more horribly broken than Modern Warfare 2 in some aspects. So Map sizes. I'd rather not go. They kind of, like, with the DLC, they got from, like, It's, it's, it's not even Parish. just size. Do I need to it... bring up Parish? Do you need me to bring up that map? Parish was fun. <laughs> Parish was fun because, you know, I don't die a lot, so I just see people <laughs> spawn in front of me and I kill them, and then they spawn in front of me again. Exactly the same space. Like... <laughs> But Black Ops 2 was actually the first game to actually offer in-game lead support, wasn't it, for the competitive scene? That's true, but more than that, well, there's Team Tactical before that, kind of. But more importantly than that, it's actually probably one of the most balanced Call of Duties recently. 
the, like you were talking about Black Ops One. The mm-hmm. reason I don't pick that is it's very very AR dominant. You see barely any yes, SMGs. Yes, true. Galil was extreme commando. Yeah, the MP5 kind of usable. You never see shotguns in that game really. No, like, no, you never saw shotguns. Sniping again because the quick scoping was nerfed so hard. Yeah, you very rarely saw people actually running around with snipers, which is why sniping in that game was more sniping. I got the hang of it at the end. I, I got the hang of it quite quickly actually at the beginning. So I found it more lean, leaning towards the Call of Duty Four. Yeah, but way they, of they patched it and made it different several times. Like they, they tried that. to keep everyone yeah. on their they toes. They tried. To, well, they made the first time that game released. Everyone was like, there was videos of people going, "I'm scoping in here, and the bullets go in here, and I'm aiming here, and the bullets go in there." And then Trey were like, "Maybe we went a bit too far with that one, guys." <laughs> yeah. Then they started to nerf it gradually until it actually got to the point where it was actually Usable. more right to use. Mm. Um, so, how are you and your teammates finding the competitive scene? It's pretty fun. Um, we're doing very, very well as a team. Yeah. Um, you I've gelling got, well. I've got a couple of clips that we could maybe cut in now. I don't think they're smart enough to though. I think they're going to have like all three pushing up into green right now. Yo, he's dead. Bombs down, and the other one's dead. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> I told you, I'm not kidding about. Two dead, two dead, two dead. Shit, Connor. Three. That's ten. Go on, get three. Go on, get three. Don't breathe, don't breathe. That's him. Grab it, grab it, grab it, grab it with me. Grab it with me. Oh, if we get this, we win. If we get this, we win. Jump on it, Connor. Go big, go big, go big. Hold everything. Someone, is it going to take? Yes! Go! Oh, 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 my Jesus Christ. Fucking hell, let's go. I just got the nastiest poopies. Oh my god, yes. Okay, you've now seen some hilarious clips of what it's like to play with us. Um, but yeah, we're, we're gelling with the scene fairly well. We're getting very, very good performance in tournaments. We're so chasing... we've actually entered proper tournaments. It's not you. Yeah, we're, we're getting to the finals and we're winning tournaments, but we're having less success when money's involved. Like, our, our first GB tournament was actually a bit of a disaster <laughs> because... Well, here's the thing. That week, Epsilon and TCM, the, the biggest teams in Europe, had went on an amnesty and said, okay, we're not going to play in this to give more amateur teams a chance to break into the scene. And you were like, yay. Three minutes before the tournament t- signings closed, Epsilon and TCM entered. Oh, uh, was that just to get more amateur people they can beat, do you think? Yeah. Is that... I, I very, very nearly used the C word to describe them on camera there. I, I <laughs> that's the one word you've told me not to use. Yep. Go- yeah. No, buy, buy, use it. Fuck you, Epsilon. Right, okay. Thank you. Because we we, had, we ended up against them first round. When first they, round? Yeah, when they said that they weren't oh. going to enter, so we got first rounded in the tournament. That just takes the piss, doesn't it? It does take the piss a little bit. But, oh, fuck's sake. That's, but we're that's not frustrated because we didn't deserve no, you to don't harbor if we grudges. couldn't. You don't harbour grudges. You would have I, had to face them at one point in the tournament, wouldn't you? If you'd actually progressed. Yeah, but the fact that they entered the tour was a bit yeah, shit. It was a bit but, shit. It was um, a bit shit. Yeah, it was just one of those things where we don't really harbour a grudge for losing because if we weren't good enough to beat a team like that we probably wouldn't be good enough to beat a team like Orbit or Exertus mm-hmm. who are also very very good teams and who entered the tournament so yeah I'm, I'm not harbouring any grudges there but it could have been it better should, I think as a learning curve for, for us I'm, I'm going to call you a starter team yeah. because you've not you say you have broken into competitors here but you're not broken into anything major yet it's going to no. happen but for a starter team you need tournaments like that on the outskirts to get used to the whole the whole rigour of the competitive setup, you know, how to yeah. prepare yourself. You know, you will training, you know, you, you don't hear training very often in, in game and it's, it may sound pathetic, but you do you do need to grind oh, yeah. it. You, you, need need to you, you need to grind it. You need to scream, you need to grind, you need to train, you need to get to know each other better and le- learn their ways. And tournaments like that without big players where you're all in the same boat, you're all in the same sort of situation would be fantastic. Yeah. And for them to come in and especially after saying they wouldn't, it's 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 a bit it's it's mm. strange. Leading, leading up to tournaments, we're practicing six to eight hours a day, every day. Wow. Yeah. That's more than I did at my school work when I was actually at school. <laughs> that, mm. that was a drop out. Anyway, learn. <laughs> despite your strong towards your influences, you, as you described earlier, you, you're not just limited to one genre of gaming. If, you, if it's not oh, represented no. on your yeah. channel, you yourself do play other genres. Yeah, um, some, some of it I play on camera, some of it I play off camera, but I play all sorts of games. So other than FPS, what other genre really, if you saw a game that came out for Xbox or for PC, would you think, oh, I'm going to get that? What genre? I don't really let genre be a factor. No. I, I listen to public opinion on what games are good, and I get good games. But um, yeah, obviously Minecraft, you've seen a bit of that on my channel, that's private at the moment, I might bring it back. 
Um, I, I play a lot of platformers off the camera. Um, I brought a couple with me today. Yeah. I don't know if you want to talk about those. Well, that's the one thing I was going to talk, bring up now is Little Big Planet, a game with such a diverse universe, um, away from the FPS genre. Yeah. Is that not a bit? You know, as a commentator, if you're talking, if you're talking over FPS, obviously you get your own style, you get your own rhythms. Yeah. If you were then going to move into another genre like Little Big Planet, where there's lots of other stuff going on that's not, you know, in your face action, is it harder to commentate over and actually engage your listeners or your viewers? I wouldn't say so. Um, I'm not an FPS fan. I'm a gaming fan, and I like playing all sorts of games. And I'm passionate about games. I like talking about games a lot. So it doesn't really matter whether this is on the screen or if this is on the screen <laughs> it really makes no difference at all yeah this is Tom's case by the way it's completely broken um, I got angry one day and it went bad it went pear shaped very quickly I'm still very good at the game I'm not I'm, I'm, he carries me a lot and judging from this it's a lot of carrying okay. it's a lot of carrying but <laughs> but yeah um, so that's another game you don't ever take to your little island because it will keep you entertained I assume for hours quite a while <laughs> okay I, I was thinking about bringing this game instead of this game but they're both good games. They both have four player co-op, but this one will keep me entertained for way longer because it focuses on a creativity aspect and you can make your own levels. And there's so much you can do in that game. Like you've got the obvious stuff where you can just like make a level and swing from tree to tree and so on. But then you've actually got a really deep system behind it as well, uh, where you've got things like logic systems and so on, uh, where you've got websites like LBP Central, where they go through that in really, really great detail. And you can build like massive computers really if you want to. On this game so that's one of the things that um so we really got involved with with little bit planet and i was never a fan but until you start playing with like two three four player like you appeared on our channel actually on little bit planet with the golf thing yeah you couldn't really hear me too well on that unfortunately, no unfortunately but not but we'll do some more hopefully yeah. some more little bit planet stuff because the idea the variety that you get there is always something for everyone mm. you know you know in, if you play little bit planet and you find you can't find something go on the forums ask people and there will be people out there that will make something for you and that will keep you, like I say, if you want a desert, a game yeah. island on your own. <laughs> yeah. Creativity. I mean, I've, I've already mentioned to. LBP Central. I'm not here as a walking advertisement, and I don't work for the site at all or anything like that. But there are lots of great. <laughs> there are there are lots of um, great creators on there, and they do like to showcase a lot of the great levels that come out. And a lot of them are actually better than the levels which were actually made for the original game. Fantastic. Say. So Stephen Fry actually did the. Uh, that's what I love about the um, he did the tutorial thing at the beginning. He did, yeah. I've got a lot of time for Stephen Fry, and when he did the voice, I was like, I'm gonna listen to every bit of tutorial because <laughs> it was fantastic, superb. But you said earlier that you got these videos on your channel that are ready to go up that are not yet public that aren't FPS. Yeah. Can we expect to see maybe a couple of those games sneak through? Maybe. 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 Fantastic. Um, I probably wouldn't actually play this on the original console though because interestingly, the emulator is actually laid for in HD. So you'll be able to see them in better quality than the original games. <laughs> Sales pitching. <laughs> Feel free to send all your advertising proceeds to <laughs> PO Box. No. But PO Box Nabbit. PO Box Nabbit. I need Nabbit. to make this that. a thing. That's awesome. But we might as well talk about it. It's it's happened. Um, this event, you know, you may have heard of. It. I don't know. Um, E3. Oh Mayor. yeah, yeah. I've, I've just about heard of E3 as it is awesome. <laughs> it is awesome. It's awesome. Is there anything that caught your eye? Don't be honest. Is there anything yeah. there from next gen that loads of stuff caught my eye? I'm yeah. looking forward to the new Assassin's Creed just because four player co op. Although they don't have woman characters, that's a bit weird. It's a bit of a backward step because they did in the other ones. But then more than that, have you seen the new Rainbow Six? Rainbow Six, the hostage situation. Yes, I love that. It looks incredible. You, Loz loves it. Yeah, we, we're getting thumbs up from behind the camera as well. Loz loves it. Like our production team love it. And uh, I just see that actually being, I was saying, I've got a video coming up soon actually about my E3 stuff that I was really looking forward to. And I said in there that I want to hear your opinion on this. Competitively, if there's enough variety in that situation, if there's enough, if there's a different, um, do you think that really t that could be quite a big or enter into the competitive scene? It depends how balanced it is and how they make it work. Mm -hmm. I mean, you've got things like Titanfall, which is a great game, really, really action-packed, but it wouldn't work for competitive. Why would it not work for competitive? Because a lot of it is bot-based, so it relies uh, on the computer a lot. Right, yes. And, and then the suits are really I forget OP. there's AI in there. Yeah, there's the lots of AI in there. Back, but yeah, that's a good point. I actually never thought of that. But Rainbow Six Siege needs to take a lot of things into consideration. Weapons, for example. Yeah. There needs to be enough variety in the weapons. Um, we only saw also the environments are almost completely destructible as well 
So yep. I, it's it's pretty alpha footage that we've seen, so we haven't really yeah. got a good judge of how the game's going to be yet. But like, depending on how destructible it is, that could be a huge factor in yeah. how competitive the game's going to be. Otherwise, you just lay C four charges everywhere and just blow up everything and make it completely mess that, of the map. That might not help though, because then like the other team would have the same mess to deal with, and they could be able to see you as much Very as you true. can. But like actually holding a hostage in a situation like that is harder than it is to get one out. Mm -hmm. that's the trouble with like doing a game like that competitively but we'll, we'll see because it's pre-alpha we don't know yet anything else apart from the Rainbow Six Siege because obviously that was um, that was one of the longer videos I saw at E3 Destiny did that catch your eye at all? I didn't actually see any of the Destiny footage see yet any of the Destiny footage. I'm, I'm deliberately keeping myself away from that footage yeah. don't don't even talk to me about anything about that game because I'm don't even put anything in the comments folks I, I don't want to see it because I'm, I'm trying to keep my eyes away it's really yeah. So we'll take a break now for the third game. I want to talk about this because you are mad on it. Yeah. Right. Pokemon. Now yeah, this is kind of like a secret. It's one of game. your passions. Dare I say, even one of your secret loves of gaming is Pokemon. Yeah. It is. I spoke to you. I was organising this. Don't setup. even leave your comments yet, folks. Let me explain. I was I was setting this interview up with Nabba on over, yeah. over Facebook. And I said oh, I've got some Pokemon cards. Nabba went, Yeah, I've got a few myself. I've got. How many have you got? I tell like a thousand Pokemon yeah. cards. I was like, I've got forty. <laughs> <laughs> I felt like you said twenty. It wasn't quite that low. Really? No, I've got. So I found some more actually since I was looking through it, and I found oh, some more, and I've popped them in now. And I think I've got some that you haven't got. It's a little. He's told me he's got <laughs> a couple, some that two I don't or three, have. I think that he might not have, and that is. I, a... I really doubt it. <laughs> I really do seriously. Doubt I do it. doubt it as well. But come on, there are so many Pokemon games. What specific one are we talking about? My favourite ones were the Gen 3 ones. Yeah. Um, after that, it became. No, get a me lot right. My little Pokemon thing is that Emerald and Sapphire. Yeah, is Ruby, right Ruby, Sapphire, Emerald, yeah. Fire Red, Leaf Green, wow. Colosseum, and XD. There were seven games. Talk Colosseum and XD are like the GameCube ones, and they're kind of separate. They do some different stuff, but they're definitely fun, and they're the only way to get some of the Johto Pokemon. So. But this specific one you've got there in front of you? Oh yeah, yeah. This is just something I happen to bring on the train because I don't actually have a Pokemon game with me, so I just brought this. But this is Pokemon White Two, so I haven't actually got a 3DS yet, which is a bit sad. I've been meaning to get one, but so you've got the game without. I've still been grinding out there playing my Pokemon World oh, tournament and stuff. Awesome. But yeah, it's good. Awesome. Game. So how many Pokemon have you got? Level 100. Level 100. Loads. Don't I? I don't know how many off the top of my head. Off. No fingers. Not enough fingers. I, I don't have enough fingers. <laughs> I've got like 50 or 60, I reckon. So. Now, I know that Nabbit likes Pokemon. Nabbit knows that he likes Pokemon. You yeah. guys know that Nabbit likes Pokemon. I like to put him on the spot right now. Okay. Mini Pokemon quick fire round. So, music please. Favourite Pokemon? Ooh. Ooh. Wobbuffet, I reckon. Wobbuffet. Uh, and I've got a reason behind this. It's not the most powerful Pokemon, but it's so much fun to use. So much fun to use. It's the Dick's Pokemon. It's banned <laughs> from competitive. It's literally banned. It has about 17 moves in its move pool, but it doesn't matter. Because it has three moves. These moves are Mirror Coat, Counter, and Destiny Bond. I think it has Destiny Bond. Does it have Destiny Bond? I think so. Yeah. I think so. Okay, yeah. Basically, Counter and Mirror Move are the reasons it's banned, though. Because whatever you throw at it, it will throw it back with double the damage. <laughs> what a dick. Yeah. Right. There's two moves. If, if you use like a special attack and you use Counter, Counter mm -hmm. will fail. If you use an attack and it uh, use Mirror Move, then... Uh, mirror move will fail, but it doesn't matter because if they sent out a match amp, it's fairly obvious they're not going to be using many special attacks, they're going to be punching you. A little secret about Wobbuffet is that the actual Pokemon is the tail, the actual body of it is Diversion. Consummate professional Pokemon player here. So, B, least favourite gym leader to face? Misty. Misty's a bitch. <laughs> this is all I have to say on the <laughs> Right, okay, you're, you're playing Pokemon Fire Red or whatever generation you like to play, if you like Gen 1 or whatever, you get through Mount Moon and you jump over that little ledge, which means you can't go back into Mount Moon, and then you're <laughs> stuck in Cerulean. Go up out of the city, you've got five trainer battles, but more importantly, you've got your rival, who is a massive dick. dick. Massive dick. See, we've got the unison <laughs> goal. You can't go down. There's a massive tree in the way, and for some reason there's a slowpoke standing in front of it, because that seems legit. <laughs> You can't go right because, I don't know, it's a crime scene. Apparently, you know, Team Rocket have like stolen the TM and this is massive news because TMs aren't expensive at all. <laughs> I think I've touched on a nerve here, folks. <laughs> Before... So you're stuck in Grind City with your level 15 Pokemon. Misty's Pokemon are about level 20. 
everyone picks Charmander, so you know what's going to happen when you walk into that water chip. You know what's going to happen. Shit, if you go up, fucked. you've got to fight a war turtle, which is another water Pokemon. They're everywhere! And if you've got like, a decent, varied team, and you know how to play Pokemon, you're completely screwed when you get to Cerulean. Prayers, folks. Just prayers. Okay, um, best legendary? I had to ask this in case you... Best legendary or most fun? Hmm, most fun legendary. Mew. Mew. Best, best legendary. Kyogre. Right. Mew, Mew can learn practically any move, which means it's very, very fun to use, and this move includes Transform, Ooh. which means that you can be basically any Pokemon and just nice. rape them with their own move, <laughs> which, which is very, very fun to do. But Stop punching yourself, stop hitting yourself, stop hitting yourself. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's what I prefer. <laughs> but um, Kyogre is probably the best legendary because you've sent it into battle, immediately it starts raining, which increases the power of all its moves. It knows Water Spout. When you've got full HP, Water Spout is ridiculously powerful. <laughs> If you've got a level 100 Kyogre, use Calm in Mind like five times so that its special attack is like boosted to like a redonkulous level, like somewhere up through the ceiling, through the stratosphere, and probably crashing into the moon. And then you decide to use Water Spout. If you use it on like a level 3 Geodude, it does so much damage that the health bar doesn't even drop. <laughs> It glitches the game, it does more than 33,000 damage, oh. and the HP bar doesn't even bother to drop down. And now the question that you're not looking forward to, Charmander, Squirtle, or Bulbasaur? Oh, This is right. where you get to direct window into a person's soul, folks. Yeah, this is, this is where I punch the window, and I say <laughs> Pikachu. Oh. While he's putting his hands up, I'm joking. I, <laughs> I despise Pikachu. Um, you, yeah, you, everyone hates me now. It, I shouldn't have said that on the internet. You should have I'm, said that on the internet. I'm done for. You're going to get some mad 40-year-old so... in a Pikachu outfit going, Why, man? Why? It's so overused. So... Just, if, if you still like Pikachu, play some Pokemon. Yellow's still my favourite Pokemon. That's the only one I've played other than Sapphire. Yellow's okay. It's based on the enemy, though. And, yeah. Subtract but seriously, come on. You're avoiding the question. Charmander, Squirtle, or Barbasaur. Right. Come on. Okay, let, let's give you a bit of history behind this first of all, though. Like... First Pokemon game I ever got was Leaf Green, and my brother already had Fire Red, and we both picked Bulbasaur. Ooh. Oh, yeah, I know. He's had he had his level 100 before I even started, but that that was quite interesting. Well, he didn't bother evolving it at all, just a level 100 Bulbasaur. Oh no, he had it as a Beanstalk. Yeah, um, yeah, that'd be a bit silly. <laughs> um, but yeah, so that was the first one. I, my first ever Pokemon was Bulbasaur, so that that's kind of like a soul touching thing, but. You've got the two, probably two of the best Pokemon of all time, which are Blastoise and Charizard. And you've yep. got to decide which one do you really want. Do you want to be able to have like a fire dragon that can fly everywhere and is a massive badass? Or do you want a water turtle that has cannons <laughs> yeah. on its back? And no offence, Venusaur is one ugly looking bastard, isn't he? I know he is. He's not a pleasant Pokemon to look at. You can't wake up in the morning and go, Hi, Venusaur. Oh. And Venusaur by itself is also shit because its main two power moves are Frenzy Bean. Plant, which Solar after you've used it you have to rest for a turn, and Solar Beam, which leaves yeah. you charge. Yeah, charge, which leaves you completely weapon to attack from a fire dragon. Unless you send that ground on first, makes it sunny, Solar Beam attacks first turn. Good point, good point. So, All Pokemon tactics we can find in Nabbit's strategic guide to Pokemon battles. We just found no one on the internet because I'm going to keep them all to myself. <laughs> I win all the battles. You win all the battles. All of them. Anyone who wishes to challenge Nabbit can do so by posting a comment below. Actually, no, they can't because I don't have a 3DS yet and the Wi Fi's gone off for my DS because it's shut down everywhere, so you can't. I'm sorry. Is it shut down? Yeah. All of the Wi Fi for all of the Wii games and the DS games shut down like a month ago. Okay. I had no idea that actually happened. It was a really sad day. Yeah. I played Mario Kart Wii for the last time. Oh, ho, ho. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they just close it off. But anyway, that's enough about Pokemon. Just needless to say, that's not the only game from your childhood on your list. Yeah. Now, I know, for, if, if you saw Nabbit come here last time, he kind of gave off the impression he'd like Sonic a little I, bit. I like Sonic quite a lot. A little bit. Just a, just a little smidgen that you like him by. There are 2D games and there's 3D games. Both are incredible. Yep. Did you like the Shadow? Is it Shadow Wolf one? Do you mean Shadow the Hedgehog? Shadow the Hedgehog. Oh my god. 
Loz, do you want to come around the camera and just give it a facial expression to describe Shadow the Hedgehog? Like... <laughs> <laughs> this is YouTube gold, but you can't see it. I'm so sorry. Just went, he had a smile on his face. He was thinking, yeah, Pokemon, then... <sighs> I've, I've destroyed his soul. Yeah, I've killed there, him. There are three Sonic games which you never, ever want to play. One of these is Sonic, um, just Sonic the Hedgehog, the Xbox 360 version. You do not want to touch that with like a barge pole, <laughs> like across a river. Just don't touch it. Um, you've got Shadow the Hedgehog. It's like Sonic, but with guns. <laughs> and if you want to get the true ending, you need to play <laughs> through the story all the way through about, I think it's 36 times or 36. 16 times or something. It's ridiculous. Just loads of times. Jeez. So and you're used to grinding. Yeah. <laughs> Come on. I, I did have a third game in mind. <coughs> I don't know what it is now. Um, I I don't really like Sonic Spinball, but that's just like my personal. Off opinion. the shit, Sonic. Yeah. Good Sonic. Good You've Sonic. chosen what? What? What Sonic game have you chosen? Have you done the case? Well, there's there's best 3D games and there's best 2D games. I went for a 3D one, which is a bit controversial. A lot of 2D games are good. Like I like Sonic 3 and Knuckles, and I like Sonic 2, but. Sonic Adventure 2 um, is the storyline is crap <laughs> so I, I can see a couple of people shaking their head right now but um, the actual game itself if you like a bit of variety as a 3D Sonic game it's probably one of the best ones ever fantastic two so. games possibly better Sonic Unleashed just the daytime levels the werewolf ones are a bit crap and also Sonic Generations because Sonic Generations was just absolutely brilliant and it was a massive nostalgia hit so for me, gaming's always had a massive social element, either be it online for playing with friends on Call of Duty, or the Time Splitters summer that me, Loz, his brother, my brother shared, where we actually played in the same room, four player co op, Time Splitters for an entire summer. That was fantastic. Great game. Is that why you've chosen Mario Kart Wii as your fifth and final game? Because that's a very sort of like, it's always been advertised in the same sort of room, in the same room, using the Wii remote and the steering wheel. Yeah. Is that something you do a lot? A lot of the time when I play games, it's all about multiplayer. But um, Mario Kart Wii was more something that I enjoyed playing a little bit with my family, although they weren't great racing fans, but also just because of like the massive like multiplayer element online and things like that. And unfortunately, the online doesn't work anymore. But we are going to give um, a four-player game. Oh, yes, we are going to show how bad we are at driving and why Nabbit drifts around every corner with supreme ease and avoids I all will. the obstacles. And I'll be in the corner going, what's with us? What's with us? <laughs> It's okay. It's okay. You're going to have a bullet bill and you're going to overtake me on the final corner. <laughs> as long as there's no cubes that put me back to the bloody beginning again, that was... That was incredible. <sighs> Can we insert that here? We'll insert or... that here. We'll insert that little clip here of, of, of Sonic. Just, just take a moment, guys, just to revel in the, the misfortune of me. And this level was annoying. What the fuck? Uh... <laughs> <Thanks>. <laughs> I'm very pleased with that. <laughs> I haven't moved. That was awesome. <laughs> I'll give you a head start. It's fine. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> Safe. I win. Fucking idiot. I was messing about. I was at the start. I was giving him credit and then he just gave it back. You know, I, you're the guest. I wanted you to do well. You know, I didn't want to show you up with my superior supreme skills. superior Sonic knowledge and skills. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> right now, the bit that I've been looking forward to: random quickfire round. Okay, you've had okay. no. I've got no preparation. You've got for no this. idea for this at all. So. I, I've seen the other questions, but I didn't know what was coming for this at all. <laughs> so, quickfire round: If you could only use one weapon from Call of Duty, what would you choose? MP5. Favorite childhood toy. We. Oui. Who's going to win the 2014 World Cup? Chile? Are they out already? Yep. Mexico. Keep going. <laughs> <laughs> Are Brazil out? Good choice, Brazil. Okay, we'll, we'll go for Brazil. <laughs> Apple or Android? Apple. Favourite flavour of crisp? Salt and vinegar. If you, if you could become any game character, who would you choose? Oh, oh, you've broken me. <laughs> I've broken never. Okay, I'll be Samus Aran because she has nice tits. <laughs> That's all we ever wanted from gaming characters is nice tits. So, Nabba, you can only take one game onto the island from yeah. your selection. Which game would you choose? Oh, I've broken him once. I'll, 
I'm gonna have to go a little bit planet because the island doesn't have internet, but I can just sit there and make loads and loads of levels for myself to play. Fantastic. Nab, it's been a pleasure to have you on the channel. It's been fantastic. I hope you've enjoyed it. Yeah. We you set could... sail now and leave you on the island all alone. Apart from when we're playing some more games Apart later. from when we're playing the little games later. So thank you very much, Nebbit. Right. Cheers for that. And uh, he'll be on our channel soon. And he'll be back on YouTube soon. Thanks. What's the date today? No idea. Cut to black.